All right, this is going to be part two of our change of variables, uh, in this case using a double integral. So we had set up this original problem, um, did quite a bit of work in the first part, but eventually we turned that all into this uh, double integral of three times uh, from zero to one and then zero to one minus u of negative u minus five v uh, dv du. So the first thing I'm going to do is just factor out this negative that's inside of here. So that'll give us negative three, the integral from zero to one, 0 to 1 minus u, and then we'll have positive u plus 5v. And we're going to integrate with respect to v and then with respect to u. So if we integrate with respect to v first, again, I'm treating u as a constant, v as my variable. So I'll get u times v plus 5v squared over 2. And we have to plug in v equals 0 and v equals 1 minus u, and then uh, integrate all of that with respect to u. So a little tedious here, but that's OK. Those are the breaks. So we'll have u times v, which is 1 minus u, plus 5 halves times v squared, which again is 1 minus u quantity squared. And I think you can convince yourself if you plug in the lower limit of integration of v equals 0, we'll just get a 0 and another 0. So I'm not going to write all that out. All right, we've got to clean up our integrand here, or at least I'm going to. So if we distribute our u, we'll have u minus u squared. If we were to foil out 1 minus u, we would have 1 uh, minus 2u plus u squared. So it looks like we would get a, a 5 halves. We would get a negative 2u. Um, so let's see, I believe. So we would have 5 halves times negative 2u. So that would give us a negative 5u. We would have a positive u squared. And we would have to multiply that by 5 halves. Okay, so I think we've got a few like terms here that at least we can uh, condense down a little bit. So if we combine these, we've got negative 3, we've got the integral from 0 to 1. Let's see, um, I'm going to write my constant first. We have 5 halves, so that would take care of that. We've got u minus 5u, so that's negative 4u. We've got a negative u squared plus 5 halves u squared. That's going to leave us with a positive 3 halves u squared. And again, this is now what I'm going to integrate with respect to u. So we've got negative 3. Let's see, our 5 halves will turn into 5 halves u. We'll get uh, 4u squared over 2, or, or negative 2u squared. It looks like we would get u cubed over 3, but the 3's would cancel, so it looks like we would have u cubed over 2 left over. Again, evaluating that from 0 to 1. So we're almost there. Um, we've got negative 3. If we plug in u equals 1, we'll have 5 halves minus 2 plus 1 half. And again, our lower limit of integration, I think you can, uh, again, convince yourself that this is simply going to give you um, a 0. So let's see. Um, 5 halves plus 1 half, that's 6 halves, or 3. 3 minus 2 is going to be positive 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And lo and behold, it says the value of that very original um, integral that we are trying to integrate um, is simply going to have the value of negative 3. So again, I think this original problem is certainly one that's not hard to integrate with respect to x and with respect to y. So if you're out there screaming, why are you doing this? We're doing it to illustrate a process, okay? Because certainly there are other, you know, there are other uh, examples where um, it's not going to be, you know, quite so easy to integrate with respect to x and y, and then we can use these tricks. So again, lots of little things to do. Again, this one's not so bad, at least because we're given the transformations um, that we have to use. Sometimes that can be a little tricky. Um, you know, mapping these boundaries can also be a little tricky. So lots of little places to kind of get confused, but um, hopefully the example makes some sense. Feel free to post comments and questions.